founder turned angel investor. Tell me a little bit about the story of uh, OpenREST, the company you founded. Um, what was the timeline of it? What was the story behind it? And of course, the exit event, etc. Okay. Um, my startup uh, process started not with OpenREST, but I just had too many friends doing startups and also too many friends uh, having exits. I decided to leave the company I, uh, I worked in as a head of software development um, and just started playing around with startup ideas. Um, the idea for an online ordering system is a stupid idea. We didn't come up with it by sitting around and saying, "Who this would be cool. We actually had a big restaurant in Israel come to us through a friend and offer to replace their current system. I've mostly worked with embedded software and uh, really a high level system architect uh, kind of products. And the option of moving to web development was, uh, you know, that would be kind of cool to play around with. Um, we went live in April 1st, 2011 with our first restaurant and the numbers just boomed. We replaced an existing uh, uh, solution and we immediately increased the, re re the restaurant's revenue. What was the product about? It was an online ordering system. Online Simply ordering. a website uh, branded by the restaurant where you can order, uh, you know, there's tons of those. It wasn't an original idea. We just did it much better than the previous system they had. And people around Israel heard about it, heard that it's that it does increase revenues and pretty quickly using a distributor in Israel, we got to around 200, 300 restaurants in Israel. We completely dominated the market uh, of white label online ordering system, not portals, but white label. We decided to try and duplicate that kind of uh, solution uh, worldwide, looking for distributors all around the world, uh, starting with friends and then uh, through offering on our website. We had distributors in California, Canada, Belgium, England, India. We had even an interest from Nigeria. We had U.S. Virgin Islands. We, uh, we had distributors around the world, but nothing really um, hopped. Nothing. If Israel was 200, 300 restaurants, the toppest uh, distributor we had around the world was California with 20. Uh, we decided this uh, isn't working. Uh, we had a salesperson who uh, traveled the U.S. tried to sign up distributors. This wasn't working. Um, we were completely bootstrapped. It's important to say. I'll touch it in a second. And uh, we decided to completely change our go-to-market to inbound marketing. We put on a fake website saying, hey, uh, do you want a restaurant app? At that point, we already had mobile apps for restaurants as well. As well. Um, and we saw that restaurants were starting to sign up. We completely changed our online, our onboarding process to be self-service. And then restaurants really signed up, went through the process, paid, and we saw this was working. Uh, five months after we started, we already had a good number of restaurants per month signing. And uh, between ourselves, we thought maybe this was a good time to start considering investments. Up until that point, we didn't want one mostly because we didn't want anyone to tell us what to do and we didn't want to uh, owe anybody anything. We just like to do our thing. So now, that's like two or three years after four, you started? Yeah, three years. Uh, there was no uh, really strategy behind not taking investment. It was just, hey, the, we enjoy not having to, uh, to uh, accommodate someone wishes, someone's wishes. Um, and um, so we were inbound marketing five months in, restaurants going in and um, one morning I just woke up and I saw that a restaurant signed in owned by uh, Gear Kaplan, the CEO of Wix. Um, I called him, I was like, you don't have a restaurant. And he was like, yeah, I saw your software, it looks cool, let's talk. And about a month and a half later, we were acquired by Wix. It was a really quick acquisition because again, we were two people, we had two employees at that point, but we know that if we were going to go to a very um, intensive uh, uh, acquisition. It'll take, it'll take all of our uh, uh, attention and the company will suffer. So on our first meeting with Avisha, the CEO of Wix, we told him, okay, let's start the process. You have a month to give us an SBA, uh, a, a, not even a term sheet. A term sheet, you have a week and you have a month to give us a contract that we can sign. And this was during September, during the holidays. Um, and indeed, 
all time time frames were met and a month later we were acquired uh 50 percent of the amount was given um either time based or at the moment of the acquisition and 50 percent was earn out was based on performance uh four years later both the time based and the earn out were fully uh fully given and uh we left wix and uh, ever since uh, then, actually, uh, uh, during the time in Wix, uh, we used to meet with startups about uh, two, twice, three times a week on Wix's rooftop, which is an amazing rooftop, uh, to talk about startups, to give our uh, recommendation. Once, twice a year, there was a startup that caught our eye and we invested. And right now, two years after I left Wix, I'm continuing to do this uh, um, just, uh, I won't say for fun, but as a profession, but as a hobby as well. So this, the, the Wix acquisition and post and, and post work time there led you into the angel investing area? Not, 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 uh, not really, because a, uh, a few months, actually a year before uh, I was, uh, we were acquired by Wix, I started angel investing in friends, uh, $10,000 here and there. Uh, one of them was uh, Axela, Web, Axela Web, which was uh, sold to Limelight Networks. So, uh, you know, $10,000 was what I could before the exit. Um, I started also then, uh, mainly focused on friends because that's the easiest way to due diligence. You just trust your friends. Mm -hmm.